Hello, I'm Emily Jumba, and I'm a fellow here at the Civil War Institute. I'm also a violinist in the Gettysburg College Sunderman Conservatory Symphony Orchestra. And today, I would like to welcome you back to another video in the Civil War era music mini-series. Today, we're going to be talking about the legacy of patriotic songs during the Civil War era. And we're going to be discussing two songs today, both of which were written in April of 1861. One of these songs, however, was pro-Confederate, and the other one was pro-Union. And one of these songs had an enduring legacy that lasted until present day, while the other did not. So, to get us started, I'm going to begin with Maryland, My Maryland. The original title of this song was A Baltimorean in New Orleans. This piece was written by James Ryder Randall on April 23rd, 1861, and then he published it three days later on April 26th. So James Randall had strong Confederate sympathies. He was originally from Baltimore, but was working as a college professor in New Orleans when the Civil War broke out. And at the time, the city of Baltimore had, was very divided between people who were pro-Confederate and pro-Union. And over the course of the war, Maryland would send thousands of soldiers to fight on both sides. The war both in the Confederacy and in the Union. So Randall was hoping that Maryland, his home state, would secede now that the Civil War had broken out and he was hoping that they would join the other, other southern states in the Confederacy. So his sentiments are very strongly shown in this piece that he wrote very early in the war. And he wrote it partially in response to the war breaking out and then also partially in response to an event that took place on April 19th, 1861. We actually already discussed this event in one of the previous videos. It's called the Pratt Street Riot, and this is whenever the 6th Massachusetts Regiment was on its way south, and they had to change trains in Baltimore, Maryland. While they were doing so, three of the companies within the regiment had gotten separated from the rest of the regiment, and a pro-Confederate mob had formed, attacked the soldiers, and there were four Union soldiers who were killed in the fighting, another 32 that were wounded, and then 12 civilians that were killed in the fighting. So, in the previous video, we had talked about this event in relation to the dying volunteer of the 6th Massachusetts Regiment. That song was a pro-Union song, which was written very soon after the event had occurred to memorialize the four soldiers who were killed during the fighting. Maryland by Maryland takes a very different perspective on this event and shows the Confederate perspective on things. So, instead of portraying those soldiers as heroes, it portrays them as soldiers of a despot coming in and invading the land of Maryland. And Randall, whenever he wrote this piece, he used a lot of pro-Confederate language, language, such as uh, calling Lincoln a uh, despot using the phrase tyrant's chain and also referring to the Lincoln administration as northern scum. So this song was very different than the one that we had earlier discussed, and whenever he originally wrote it, he wrote it in, as a poem in nine verses, which he then published in the New Orleans Delta, which was a newspaper that was circulated throughout the city. Soon, the poem began to spread through papers throughout the South until it eventually made its way up to Baltimore, Maryland, Randall's hometown. In Baltimore, it was seen by Jenny Carey, and whenever she saw this poem, she decided to put it to music. So there's a specific tune that she chose that actually has two songs that go along with it. One is Larger Horatius, which was a popular song at Yale University at the time. The other song that goes to this tune is O Tannenbaum. And after she had put the poem to the song, she then went forward and performed it at a 4th of July celebration in 1861. And from there, it quickly spread until it became almost like an anthem throughout the Confederacy. It became very, very popular among the Confederate soldiers. So this song was popular throughout the Civil War, although immediately after, it did receive some pushback, although it did not last very long. By the late 1860s, it had become, yet again, a political tool and was used by both Democrats and Republicans throughout the South whenever they would give their speeches as they would quote lyrics from the song. It remained popular f through the next several decades, and in 1939, this song became the state song of Maryland, and it remained so until the year of 2021. During uh, 2020 and 2021, there was a lot of discussion coming up about the legacy of the Civil War and the Confederacy within the United States. And uh, part of this discussion was the song Maryland by Maryland, as it was brought up that there were all of those pro-Confederate phrases that I had earlier mentioned. And in addition to that, in one of the lyrics in the eighth verse of the song, 
it uses the word six semper, which is part of the Latin phrase that John Wilkes Booth shouted after he had shot President Lincoln in April of 1865. So due to those reasons, it was repealed from being the state song of Maryland, although it is still present in popular memory today. So now I'm going to be playing for you Maryland by Maryland. So that was Maryland by Maryland, and now we're going to be discussing another song that was written in April of 1861, although it did not have quite as enduring of a legacy as this first song that we discussed. So this next song is The First Gun is Fired. This piece was written by George Frederick Root on April 15, 1861, and then he then published it on April 16th. He wrote this piece in response to the firing on Fort Sumter, and this piece is considered to be one of the first, if not the first, song written about the Civil War, and as it was written immediately after the firing of Fort Sumter. And George Root would go on to write several other songs about the Civil War during its course, many of which became very popular. But this first one was popular among the soldiers of the Union throughout the course of the war. After he had written this song, he went on to write works such as Tramp, 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 The Vacant Chair, which we discussed in one of the earlier videos in this series, and The Battle Cry of Freedom, which became extremely popular and almost became similar to an anthem among the Union. And while uh, he did write all of these famous works, this particular song, The First Gun is Fired, kind of faded in popular memory, perhaps in part, possibly at least due to some of his other works becoming just so famous that they kind of overshadowed this earlier piece. And in addition to that, its um, tune was not quite as well known as that of Marilyn My Maryland. As I'd mentioned, Marilyn My Maryland was set to the tune of two pretty famous pieces, Larger Horatius, which was very well known at Yale University at the time. So alumni and students of that school would have recognized it and people familiar with other schools at that level, and then in addition, it shared the same tune as O Tannenbaum. So a lot of people would have known the tune and would have made the song easy to remember and pick up and just keep forward through memory as time would go on. However, the first gun is fired did not have quite as memorable of a tune just because it did not base itself off of a song that was already written, but was something completely new. And then it was at least in part possibly overshadowed by some of those more famous works such as the Battle Cry of Freedom. So now I'm going to be playing for you The First Gun is Fired.
that was the first gun is fired and like I said it did not have quite as enduring of a legacy as Maryland by Maryland had but like Maryland by Maryland it was also very popular among the soldiers during the Civil War itself. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video.